If you liked corny television shows, questionable aesthetics, and historic sports dynasties, chances are you were thriving in the 1990s. There was greatness all over the place. Sports stars were cool, flashy, and loud. But in the middle of all that swag were three pretty nondescript white guys who happened to compose one of the most illustrious pitching rotations of all time. The story of the Big Three begins with a franchise in the middle of the most pitiful, pathetic, and downright depressing championship drought in sports history. The Chicago Cubs finished the 92 season below 500, so naturally they were getting rid of Greg Maddox, a 26-year-old Cy Young winner responsible for winning over a fourth of their games that season. Maddox was sought after by another team in a slump, albeit a much shorter slump, the Yankees. They wanted him bad, courting him as if he was the prettiest girl without a prom date. The Braves were also shopping for players and their sights were set on Barry Bonds. Braves management allegedly had a verbal trade agreement with the Pirates for Bonds, but at the 11th hour, the Pirates called off the deal. As fate would have it, Atlanta would use that extra cash to sign Maddox, who took a $6 million discount to play for the Braves instead of the Yankees. Maddox was joining a pitching staff that was already on the verge of greatness, thanks in part to two guys, John Smoltz and Tom Glavin. Smoltz's road to Atlanta was also fairly unusual. He was drafted by the Tigers in 85. In 87, the Tigers needed pitching help, so they traded the 20-year-old minor league prospect to the Braves for 36-year-old vet Doyle Alexander, a guy who'd be out of the league just a couple of years later. Tom Glavin was a Braves draft pick in 84 and made his MLB debut in 87. In a couple short seasons, Glavin and Smoltz had become aces. The Braves' esteemed pitching coach, Leo Mazzoni, deserves some credit. Mazzoni had a unique pitching schedule for his guys, making them throw more on off days than most coaches would. The Braves had been improving leading up to 1992, but just couldn't get a hold of that elusive championship. They fell just short of World Series victories in both 91 and 92. The Toronto Blue Jays are baseball's best in 1992. Smoltz and Glavin helped bring the Braves to the verge of a championship, but they still needed one final piece. Enter Greg Maddox. Maddox, Smoltz, Glavin, the Atlanta Aces, the Strike Squad. These are all better names than what they became known as, the Big Three. Each pitcher brought something distinct to the group, in personality and in pitching styles. Maddox didn't throw the hardest or the fastest, but his near-perfect mechanics and ability to expand the strike zone made him lethal against batters. And folks, you just saw a great pitching performance. Even towards the end of his career in 2008, he led the NL with the highest called strike rate. Off the mound, Maddox was known as a huge prankster. I won't even say what he did to his teammates because you should just Google it. John Smoltz was the strikeout god. He threw a killer fastball but could trick batters with his slider too. At the end of his tenure with the Braves, he had 3,011 strikeouts. Jeter. One away. Glavin was a lefty who relied on his slider, fastball, and changeup to record his 305 wins in 22 seasons. He's one of only six lefty pitchers in history to hit 300 wins. He punches him out. Unlike a lot of famous teams with famous stars, Atlanta never had a problem with three aces sharing the spotlight, which they had to do a lot since they were all constantly sharing Cy Young awards, NL wins records, and all-star votes. Not long after joining forces in Atlanta, the real fun started. The Braves went from having an average team ERA in 1989 to the best in baseball in 1993. Despite the change of scenery, Maddox stayed consistent, winning his second, third, and fourth consecutive Cy Young Award from 1993 until 1995. The Big Three were an immediate hit. Braves' attendance doubled going into 1991 and then doubled again going into 1993. Not only were they delivering on the mound, they were friends in the dugout and, more importantly, on the golf course. You might remember that Glavin and Maddox starred in the most 90s cornball Nike commercial of all time. Chick stick the long ball. To this day, John Smoltz is salty he wasn't asked to be in the commercial. Smoltzy, chicks dig the long ball, not the bald spot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> With the big three, the Braves won 14 consecutive division titles and made deep playoff runs almost every year. The big three started a total of 84 playoff games for the Braves. In 70% of their starts, they gave up two earned runs or less. Postseason after postseason, they gave the Braves the chance to win. So while they may only have one World Series ring, it kind of just goes to show how winning a World Series is really, really, really hard. In 1995, the unthinkable finally happened. Cleveland and Atlanta met in the World Series. Atlanta went up 2-0 with unforgettable performances by Glavin and Maddox, including a game in which Maddox only allowed two hits. In Game 6, with a World Series parade already planned for the following Monday, Tom Glavin pitched an eight-inning shutout to seal the deal. An inning away from the end of a five-year quest for the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves were World Series champions. The team of the 90s has its World Championship. 
Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox were each shoe in first ballot Hall of Famers, so even though the big three won't be in the same pitching rotation ever again, at least they'll always be together in Cooperstown and at a golf course near you. If you think they're not that impressive because they only won one World Series, then let me see all of your World Series rings. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to SB Nation.